Hello, my name is Ailish and welcome to my new YouTube channel. This is the first video on this channel. It's a get ready with me whilst you get to know me. I talk a little bit about why I've got a new channel later on in the video, but because it is new, if you could please subscribe if you haven't already or like the video or comment or just engage with this video, it would really, 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 really be appreciated by me. I'd also like to pre-warn you about the jump scare. That is my appearance when we go back to before I've got ready. <laughs> But without further ado, let's get into the video. Don't say that I didn't warn you about the jump scare. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And we'll talk about the elephant in the room first, I guess. Let's start this off. Let's start this get to know me off and get ready with me off. Bye. Um, I've just had my lips filled. So um, that's the bruising, obviously. And my skin's actually quite... It to be fair, in the camera, it doesn't look too bad, but I've got some quite painful, angry spots here. And like, I am on my period, so like, my period hormones have just been a little bit violent this month. And also, my hair, I think I'm gonna give it a brush because I just can't sit here with my hair like that for the whole time getting ready because you just can't, it's not okay. But, anyways, so yes, I guess I'll talk about the procedures that I have had done because I feel like that's a good way to I don't know I'm just talking about myself I'm just talking about things that just come to my mind so um I have had lip filler I think ever since I was 21 maybe I'm actually going to rewind back like really rewind back um and you know what even talk about surgery so let's just start I had my appendix removed when I was eight years old. So basically, um, I had really, really bad stomach pain, agony, my parents were petrified and I went to hospital and they kept us in hospital for 24 hours. And in this time that I was in hospital, a little boy came in after me and had his appendix surgery and was out before I'd even had mine. Um, and it turns out because female organs are just different to boy organs, like it took them longer, I realised it wasn't, uh, it was appendicitis with me. Um, and my appendix had burst. And yeah, so that was really painful. That was my first surgery. I've got an appendix scar, it's really ugly, like it's so jaggedy. And I had a friend in school and he had appendicitis like a couple of years after me and his was a perfect line. It's just crazy how fast like these things progress. Oh, I need to brush my hair. Um, so that was my first surgery. And then my second surgery, my second and third surgeries were both mouth surgeries. So I had an impacted tooth like in the roof of my mouth that was kind of potentially gonna be dangerous and could get infected. So they removed that. So they had to pull the roof of my mouth off, remove that and put that back in. I think that's when I was like a teenager. And then the next one I had, they removed two wisdom teeth and two other teeth because I was getting braces because I had a really bad underbite like a really bad underbite that I got like quite a lot of stick for in school to be honest and I was getting the orthodontic treatment to kind of correct the underbite basically because I couldn't bite down properly correctly but after the orthodontics they realized that actually they only needed to do the top and they brought the top jaw forward so that I didn't have an underbite any longer and yeah it actually made me nose a little bit cuter because they brought me top jaw forward so yeah anyways so that's the surgeries that i have had done <laughs> so as you can imagine like most of those were my mouth like most of those were related to my mouth so i think that i've just had pretty bad relationship with my mouth like honestly always like i feel like it's always been something that i've probably been quite insecure about like in hindsight thinking back and so i had those three surgeries on my mouth i had braces for five years and i still had pretty bad i was like smiling and i was just like oh i expected something better for all of the years that i've been put into this like i expected to like myself a little bit more so i thought that lip filler would fix it so i went a bit crazy and i didn't really do too much research because it was a few years ago it was before it was really like popular popular and I just went to the first person I found that seemed to be like okay rated and she did it the French way and I swear to god she so basically she just put it in the side the side the bottom the bottom in the middle sideways and like basically all the way around the edges and it probably took a three minutes that lady took three minutes and obviously I had no lips to be honest if I can find some pictures I'll put them in I, I really had no lips and 
I just got quite a bit like and I kept going back and it all migrated and it was pretty terrible and um, but I was pretty happy and confident but when I look back I'm like oh, it's a little bit too much a little bit too soon but I, I was uneducated I didn't know so when I came over to Dubai I got them dissolved after a little while and um, the top lip at least I got the top lip at least and now I get the Russian technique which is where they go in directly instead of as a line around the outside and outline your lips it goes directly in and adds volume so that's why it's so badly bruised in these particular areas because it's just a lot of the same needle points where tiny little droplets are released so lips <sighs> Um, additionally, other things that I get done, um, I've had Botox done for the past year, so I get that on my forehead uh, and here, which is still doing good. So yeah, I have really liney forehead and do you know what? Botox is great. I love it. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is that I got veneers. So as we can see, do you know, my mouth has been something that's uh, been an issue for us, you know, and even still with my lips nice and my teeth straight, I just wasn't perfectly happy with them because I'm a really happy person and I smile a lot. And I just always felt a little bit ugh, when I looked at myself in, but like, I was just like, that's not me. So, um, yeah, that's the things that I have done. Okay, so my hair looks marginally better. Um, this video, I feel like, is going to be so much longer than I thought it was going to be talking about these things. Um, I've got no nothing planned. Like, I've got nothing scripted. It's just me, vibes, and my little makeup bag here. That That's all we've got. Anyways, so the reason that I think um, I spoke about... Well, obviously, like, it's impossible to hide the fact that I've got bruises in my lips. But the fact that I just wanted to talk about all of those things first up is because... I feel like transparency with these kind of topics is really important. I think you do you and you genuinely, whatever you want to do in life, do it. Like, it's genuinely your life. If it makes you happy, go ahead. But I think if we're secretive about these things and we don't talk about them, um, you can make the wrong decisions. Like, for example, me getting my lips done as a 19-year-old and not realising and just thinking that if, you, like the name brand of a co company because i hear a lot of like really big clinics are actually terrible for the you go because you're like it's renowned it's a renowned name but they're not renowned for say like lip filler or whatever other treatment you're gonna get whether you get any other type of kind of cosmetic treatments and you end up with something that doesn't look good and it's hard to reverse like my lips looked terrible and now these are a couple of days until the healed but like I don't get ginormous lips anymore I really just get a bit of shape in my top like there was about two three pinpricks in my bottom because me even though the last time I got these done was like a year ago um there's no point in putting anything in the bottom because it's a nice normal size so yeah i think that we should talk about these things because yeah more people get things done than you would expect like some people get eyelashes done all the time nails like treatments are treatments at the end of the day and you the knowledge is power like knowing what works for you and not like i like all of these things because um i really used to hate having a liney forehead um ever since i was like 16 like i always just very expressive person i always had lines in me whole eye, but my eyebrows still have like <laughs> full range of motion here like i can still be super duper expressive um my lips was something i was insecure about my teeth and not just kind of like I, I researched all of these further things like it took us about two years to come around to Botox and teeth of which I saved up for for two years because I was like I think I want these I'm just gonna do shit tons of research uh, and then came to that decision whereas the lips was more of a like split decision thing although I tell you what right the first time I got my lips done, I actually, now that I've just reminded myself about this, sometimes actually make decisions on a split because I got my lips done the first time and I, I can remember this actually as clear as day. I was a little bit older than I remember. It, oh, how old were you? I think I was 22. I was 22. I got them done and I felt like hot shit because you do feel like hot shit when you've had thin lips your whole life and you've got a little bit of pout you feel sexy right and I felt I felt hot right and 
the day after one or two days after i broke up with my ex who had just like drained the life out of me for a few years so it was the wrong decision in terms of like my face i should have got it done a different way but it actually it gave me that little that i needed to like move forward with my life so we've got a little it's subjective you know you've got to decide based on your circumstances it could be the right or the wrong decision um okay let's go into that topic then i guess so um i'm just talking about things like i'm literally just gonna totally talk about lots of things so i live in dubai with my partner jake um we've lived here since september 2020 and we first met on the 17th of october i want to say 17th of october 2018 so i was 22 and Jake was 19 at that time and um, we met at a f so we met through our best friend basically which mm, I love so much so basically my best friend in uni and my best friend is Frankie she was on the judo team Jake was on the judo team I had recently just broken up with my ex because I had sexy lips we've just spoke about this you know remember remember that um, and I just moved out of the place that I was living with him into an apartment by myself and that was the first night that I was going to be spending alone and my friend Frankie she was just like oh we're having like a judo social you know like we're going to dress up in outfits and we're going to go out drinking and I was like that sounds a lot better than staying in here alone um in my new apartment alone so I went out and went to the social and it was really fun it was really fun and that's where I met Jake and initially like i thought that he was very handsome and attractive and i thought he was very young um because historically i would date older people and um he had like a fitness watch on like a garmin and i was very interested by that so i was talking about that to him but i didn't really like him because he was in the army and stuff and that's just not my vibe i was a little bit annoyed by him but he was interesting right I still found him attractive and basically he's ringing us right now speak of the devil oh my gosh hi gorgeous oh my angel you okay yeah i have Hello. just been talking about you i love you very much love you too i'll see you soon love you bye we're actually just telepathic i think but basically um i had obviously just re like this all happened within a very very short space of time so i got my lips done the day after i broke up with my ex so i must have got it done on the saturday i got my lips done the sunday i broke up with my ex the wednesday i moved out the wednesday was the day that i met jake so at this social i was just talking about this experience that i had just breaking up with my ex and just telling them about how the relationship ended because i just felt like i was totally my energy was being zapped my energy was being drained and i think in a relationship you know it doesn't have to be perfect all the time and you're not going to be perfect all the time like you're going to have down days down months like sometimes it's going to be hard but at the end of the day you need to bring your own happiness to a relationship you need to be happy on your own and you need to be a happy version of yourself maybe not happy happy is like happy is a word that i like to use but maybe content like you need to be somebody who is confident content and like happy <laughs> i like the word happy but you know what i mean you have to be like accepted of yourself as a person and this person that i was with just wasn't and literally leached the energy out of me and would always make comments on what i wore i at this point i started having my first couple of brand deals on instagram and that's really cool as a student who worked three jobs to be able to get paid a hundred pounds to take a picture in some gym clothes like i was so excited and he was like i don't want to do these for you oh, are you having like you're not going to pose in public this is so embarrassing like i hate this all of these things and just really dragged me down and would always be like you know you're lucky that i put up with you you are lucky because you're really annoying and you're really irritating and all of these things and would was just so miserable and constantly dragged us down so i was telling jake about this i was telling him about the relationship that i had just ended and that like resonated with him similarly like similarly but different in the sense that he was unhappy in his relationship for different reasons because he was in a relationship at the time 
and then that was it right um after the night after i thought that he was called g i didn't remember his name i just remembered i had a nice conversation with this guy and then frankie messaged us like a week later being like oh you know jake from last week he's actually single now do you want his snapchat and i was like oh do i want his snapchat so yeah i guess that was that really um about a week after we met we like had our first date and then we were inseparable ever since like i moved in with him straight away and um, three weeks after meeting i had like fully moved in with him and we didn't spend a day apart for three months until christmas and then to take a side tangent i guess i'll talk about previous relationships i throughout school was always kind of like tomboyish slash a bit weird like a bit of a freak and um like that's fine and that's okay and i like that now but you know I didn't have the best time in school I don't think I was bullied a little bit I was never like a pretty girl in school I never had anyone ask us out and I think maybe one person did ask us out as a joke and I mean I asked a few people out throughout my career in school and everyone rejected us you know like um I didn't really have a good time <laughs> with boys <laughs> as a younger person um, and then my first ever boyfriend, I think I was 13, so you know, I mean, it, to be fair, like 13, that's not too bad going, you know, to like, find a boyfriend, I guess. But yeah, that was my first boyfriend that I got with when I was 13, I think we were together for about three years. And that was a really good relationship because we were both just like really weird. And he was a little bit older than me, which was my kind of type, I think. <laughs> Um, and it was a nice relationship like I think we both grew a lot in that relationship and the only reason that it ended was just because we grew apart like we became different people like I was 13 when we started going out and I was 16 when we stopped going out so I changed a lot in those years and then my next relationship was from like 17 to like 21 22 so it was quite a long relationship and um, with somebody significantly older than me that I just wish if I could go back in time and tell myself to not be with someone who is eight years older than you because they've got no good interest at heart when you're 17 and they're like 24 25 you do not have anything in common like you do not as a girl like the fact that literally like my prefrontal cortex didn't develop until last year like it doesn't develop till your mid-20s and i turned well, I was 25 last year, so uh, I turned 26 last year, I turned 27 this year, so like maybe it like developed like one or two years ago, do you know what I mean? Like, and that was like eight years after that relationship, you can see what I mean here, right? Nothing good can come of that. And then yeah, I met Jake who was two years and a little bit younger than me and I was like a little bit young. But actually, that man is double my age on the inside, I tell you. And it's actually really interesting. I don't know how much I'm going to talk more about this topic, but yesterday I put a Q&A thing on my stories because I haven't done that in a while. And nobody really asks anymore because my account hasn't got new people in a while. Like, I haven't got gained any new followers. So I think everyone more or less knows us. <laughs> but, like, somebody put in a question box... Are you and Jake still together? Like, you never post each other anymore. Or you never post him anymore. He doesn't post on Instagram. And it's very interesting because a few years ago, when I was a student, I used to think that people who didn't really post about the relationship online were unhappy. I was like, why wouldn't you post about your relationship if you are happy? You know, like, you should be posting each other all the time. The last thing that I want to do these days like i just feel so pulled left and right by life all the time the last thing that i want to do when i'm like really truly in the moment with jake and just like spending time with him and being with him is be on instagram <laughs> do you know what i mean like it's so crazy to me like you have to be posting regular like to be fair we haven't really done we don't like whenever we go out and do stuff like whenever we go out and socialize sorry i'm not very good at makeup by the way um but whenever we go out and socialize um we don't we're not really socializing that much lately so there's not not even anything to post you know what i mean like we're not doing much <laughs> so anyways yeah like i just find that so crazy because i used to be the same like i used to think like oh obviously like you must be unhappy if you're not posting about your relationship but 
I mean, I'm an adult, do you know? I mean, like, I've got better things to do than to be... And also, okay, we're going to move on to a different topic now. Like, love you, Jake. Thank you for being topic of conversation. We're moving on now. But basically, um, this is a new YouTube channel. And the reason that I made it is because as... When I was younger, when I made my Instagram, it was genuinely because I had no friends um i was like I, I i was coming out of basically when i was younger and like had low self-confidence and had been bullied a bit like it turned me a bit nasty and i was a bit of a meanie for a little bit for a little bit of time like i w i went through my like bitch phase and i think that was due to like yeah because people were nasty to me i was outwardly nasty and then I realized that that is not me and it's not nice and it doesn't have to be that way so I was on this kind of like personal growth journey of just like positive happy vibes and that's what I want to put out into the world and I just want to like leave kindness like I don't care if I get kindness in return I just want to know that the actions that I do and how I act and how I present myself is going to leave a positive mark on somebody um so because i was coming out of this meanie phase like not many people like this you know and i wasn't really that fun and i all i did was go to the gym so i made an instagram account because that was the thing to do back in 2016 was to make a fitness account that's when they started becoming a thing on instagram um so i posted like my social media career started because i had no friends and all i did know is health and fitness so it's just what I posted about. And like, remember how I spoke about that like first contract? Well, I didn't take payment or I didn't have any kind of payment until I had like 150,000 followers on Instagram. And I had such an insane engagement rate thinking about it, like looking back. Um, and it was all girls at that point as well. And because it was never a business, you know, it was never something that was a business. It was literally just me vibing <laughs> with like, fitness i feel like i've been talking for ages and i've got absolutely nothing to show for it so yeah when i posted on instagram and i had all this like um response and i had all this growth there was never any like motive behind it i was just vibing oh shit i really like to rub this in first with my fingers before i don't do my makeup very often so i forgot how i want to do it oh my god so much has just came out oh we're not vibing anymore anyways so i never really had a strategy behind it i never really had any management or anything like that and when people make social media now it's very very calculated you know you do these things purposefully to grow with a reason with something to sell and um so the way that i built my social media essentially was doing great until one like and i didn't realize this because i had nothing to, i had no idea about all these stupid insights and I, I really didn't pay attention and i'm so frustrated with myself for like not realizing at the time but basically i posted a picture and it was an it was literally such a unsuspecting picture it was a picture of me and my friend ellie and it literally got like forty thousand likes and i was like buzzing this is amazing there wasn't like well fully clothed in gym wear whatever and then it turns out and i got like loads of followers from that obviously because it got forty thousand likes it got like it reached a few million people and it grew quite a lot this account um this photo grew the account quite a lot and it's only in hindsight that i realized that it went into like men like it it got seen by men and it was men following the account and i didn't realize until much later that that is what had happened so, like obviously i still had my base of girlies but it would be so much men had like started following the account and then because they had started following i guess the algorithm had pushed out to more and more men which it's bad for your engagement if you're not selling anything for men do you know what i mean or if you're not providing anything for men same thing happened on my youtube which is why i made a new youtube now because this happened ages ago but again i've just decided to look at the analytics and been really sad <laughs> because it turns out on my old account like 75 percent of the subscribers were men and this is because i did a bikini haul as a stupid 22 year old 23 year old and again, it got like a million views on YouTube, which is pretty crazy. 
and it was all stupid freaking men wasn't it so anyways that's like um i'm making this new youtube account because i've actually got a purpose now you know i've got a structure that i want to follow i want to provide really really useful helpful educational health content for women um, and if I see a man, he's getting blocked from a mile away, do you know what I mean? No offence, but you're not my target audience, yeah? Anyway, so that's why this account is here. This is why I'm chatting. And why am I making a talking video? Well, because the thing is, I just feel like on TikTok and on Instagram, you just can't get a vibe for a person. You just really can't get a vibe for who a person is through pictures or through texts. You don't know what they're like. You don't know how they talk. You don't know what the personality is like. And the best thing you can get is YouTube. And I love YouTube, to be honest. It's my favorite social media. I love to watch video essays, which is hopefully the kind of direction I would like to take this account, like video essays on health topics do you know what i mean that gets me pumped that gets me that makes me feel sexy but not makeup but i know that um these are good because it keeps you distracted whilst you kind of i don't know what i'm doing i'm just here i'm really just here for a good time and i guess we can circle back to like my job and actually what it is that i do and stuff and just take you through actually let's go through the history of my jobs so basically when I was 16, I got my first job through nepotism, baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nepotism, I'm correct here, yeah, you know. Basically, no need to brag here. Yeah. Well, I'm bragging anyways, but actually, me mom worked at Asda. And she actually just put me name forward when they were, like, hiring for seasonal staff. And I got an interview. So, yeah, take that. Nepo baby right here. Um, and I worked at Asda for like five years on and off. It was truly the worst thing in my entire life. It's how my old, my second relationship started. It was a job that did not care about your mental health. It was terrible. They messed me around so much, especially being a student. And I was working three jobs at one point to support my like uni and, um, be able to have £20 a week to spend on food um, on top of like obviously paying rent and things like that. But yeah, they would just be like, yeah, we've got a space for you because it was seasonal work to begin with. They were like, yeah, we've got a space for you. Oh, sorry, we don't anymore. And then um, I got two jobs, one at a bar and one with the students' union at my university. Um, and then the rang is up a month and a bit later being like, oh, we've got a job for you now. And I was like, oh, I've got these other two jobs. But I can't say no to this because it's seasonal. So it means that like, I'm gonna have, do you know? Um, and the people that worked with me were horrible. There was probably a handful and they all left of like really, 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 really incredible people that I worked with in my time there. Um, girls my own age um, that were really nice. But it was mostly just other like men and women who weren't my own age and stuff and they were mean, they were horrible, they were nasty, like it was a really horrible bullying environment. Um, and yeah, so I was working there on and off at like about three different Asdas for five years um, and it was one of the last nice people who worked with us she left she got a job as like an electrician and i was like you go girl like love you um and then i realized it was just gonna be me and all of the nasty pasties and i was like i can't do this like she has left she has found a job that's better i want to do that too so i just kind of had to think of what i was gonna do and um uh, at this point my instagram like wasn't making any money like i said like it was like i was just vibing like i had my instagram account at this point i think i would had it for a year i got like a post that had 2000 likes you know it was like it was going okay um but i got a job at this place called the naked deli which is a health cafe in newcastle and it was like the best job i've ever ever worked the people it i was it was such a pleasure to go into work and you know i loved it because it fit around uni really well it gave us structure because i either worked in early or late and i would go to the gym after the late or i'd go to the well i'd go to the gym before the late or after the early um and i mean i was literally making coffee and smoothies for a living it was heaven and obviously it was a health cafe so i was studying nutrition at university i was working in a health cafe like making food like 
oh, it was amazing so i i basically just and it was no more money than as that like the benefits were no better apart from working in a cafe do you know what i mean um it was just one similar job to another but i just was sat there and thinking like I hate everything about Asda. What would I actually enjoy as a part-time job? Like what would genuinely fill my cup up? Like where would I get this positive energy from? And yeah, it was there. So I worked there for a few years until um, my Instagram started to be able to like take home the same amount as work in there part-time. And then lockdown happened. So obviously didn't work anymore because it was 2020 and at that point it was just social media that i was living off like influencing and vibes brand deals um where you just had to like post stories and you got commission and things like that and then essentially jake got an injury that prevented him from doing the job that he set out to do and we weren't really too sure where to go my own i just i was finishing uni i was finishing my master's and he had just finished his undergrad and we weren't too sure what to do because we already had like a bit of a plan set out from what we were supposed to do before his injury and we didn't know what to do after that so we thought what we could do was maybe move abroad and jake looked around for jobs that he could do and he found a job in real estate in dubai and i was like well i'm self-employed so i should be able to work anywhere so we can try it out and see how it works um so i got my level 3 pt so that i could have a backup in dubai like if i needed to get a job at a gym or something like that but i had my online and jake um started working in real estate and to be honest i spent every single penny of my savings to move out here um not a single penny <laughs> was left I, truly um it was such a leap of faith such a risk um it just felt like the right thing to do we did a pro and cons list about moving out here and it was just heavily weighted on the pros but genuinely we were scraping we were on the bones of our ass <laughs> that's what we were when we moved out here um, it was so expensive, especially to set up self-employed as well and get your trade license and visa and stuff. And then a few months after moving out here, I had the kind of idea to become an online coach. Online coaching, I think, started around 2016. And in 2020, it was still relatively like new. I didn't really see much of it online personally. What I saw online of it was very specific online coaching so if you were a bodybuilder who was doing shows i would see that kind of thing um or if you were an athlete you know like athletes had online coaches i knew that much um i don't even do makeup so i don't know what the fuck i would actually do next um eyeshadow and then you'd have like transformation pts so there wasn't much out there and for that i didn't think that i could be one because i knew that i had a different perspective on fitness and health and i thought that in fitness and health it should be something that goes around your lifestyle i think that everybody should have some kind of wellness routine because it makes you feel better it's good for your health you're gonna have a longer healthier happier life if you do look after your fitness and you look after your diet period like period if you've got good routines you feel good because i hadn't seen people do it differently i just thought online coaching was pts given really low calorie meal plans and really strict exercise regimes to their clients where they would basically be in a huge calorie deficit obviously if they're eating very little and they're exercising very much um of course they're going to have crazy physical transformations that's kind of what i thought it was all but there are so many things that could happen you could move house you could move country you could break up with a partner you could move in with a partner all of these things happen in life to normal people who work normal jobs that are sedentary or hard or take a lot of hours and you don't have the time to exercise seven days a week and you need more energy than a thousand calories a day you know so i thought that there was definitely space there to have my own brand of health coaching 
which finds a way of exercise for you that you enjoy that can either increase or decrease depending on the time you have available actual dietary education so like looking at your diet seeing where it currently is and how to improve the overall dietary quality of it to support your busy life and basically how to build a busier routine you know like because it's really hard to build from the ground up so giving you the support and advice on how to kind of get more done in your day and that's what I've been doing since. So I've been doing that for coming up to about two and a half years now. And I love it. I'm so passionate about it. I'm truly so passionate about, I've just found a brush, but yeah, I'm so truly passionate about it. Like I love problem solving and I love helping women find something that works for them when they have tried everything to change their physical appearance to either build muscle and build mass and gain mass or the opposite to get more toned and defined and lean and um, build the muscles that they want to show off whilst not actually sacrificing anything in their lives like making it work around their lives in a way that they enjoy okay enough about work let's talk about other things let's have a quick round of fun facts i'm an oldest sister i am five years older than my younger sister i am eight years older than my twin brothers it was very fun to be honest i loved being an older sibling essentially the reason there was a five-year age gap was because i was a devil child and i really 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 tormented my poor parents i really 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 ruined the first five years of my life for them if you know what I mean like me being zero to five was um they had no peace I slept in their bed I was an irritating little devil but do you know it was the first child and they just loved us and cuddled us and I actually read a book not long ago called the book you wish your parents had read and your children will be glad that you did and found out that because they kind of catered to me and loved me and blah 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 and even though I was even though it was horrible for them <laughs> I actually have a secure attachment style thanks to that which has helped me so I'm really grateful for that thanks mom and dad love you guys not that they're watching this they won't be watching this but like whatever they've got better things to do than spend like 40 minutes watching the daughter talk shit on uh, youtube i have a lot of talents like i'm not gonna lie that i get quite a lot of things i'm kind of like a sponge i'm more or less pretty decent at things i'm interested in at things i'm not interested in i will just like block it out you know but I am very artistic and most forms of media I am fantastic with. Exercise, I'm pretty good at lots of things. I'm pretty flexible, I'm pretty fast, I'm pretty strong. I'm not great at anything by any means, but you know, I'm pretty good at a lot of those things. And just generally in life, I'm pretty good at talking, blah, 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 blah. But you know what I'm not good at? Music and rhythm. Like I sing so bad that I could probably kill a small animal if they were standing too close while I sang. And I've also got no rhythm, like zero rhythm. And I, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, how you can be good at some things and not good at others. Like I'm really good with lines and art and precision, but try and get me to hold the beat. Actually, moving on from that, but closer to that, but we're like in the same circle here. I can remember words so good in songs. If you're knowledgeable on this topic, please do share because it's really interesting, I think. But um, I can remember words in a song and I can sing a song without the music and get it perfectly. But I can't hold a beat like and I can't dance to a beat and I don't have rhythm and I can't talk to my body in rhythm, if that makes sense. So that's just a fun fact. Put some art in front of me and I'll blow you away, but put some music in front of me and I will make you laugh. And don't try and get us to sing because it's embarrassing for everybody involved. And there's a funny story about that, basically. You definitely had a sing star when you were younger. Well, I got a sing star for Christmas one year and I sung the first song on it. And then there was a feature at the end of the song, which was playback. And it would play back the song that you just sung in the sing star and it played back me and I was singing out of the com of the TV and Ooh, it was bad and I was screaming I was like that's not me 
that's not me that's not my voice and obviously my mum and dad were laughing their bums off because it was hilarious because it was just me singing terribly and i was just like it's lying it's changed me voice that's not me i don't know what other facts to use in me like fun whip around fast fact time this one might be obvious to you but i actually love the sound of my own voice because <laughs> i've just thought i'm gonna have to sit back and listen to this whilst i edit it on the laptop and i love it you know when i first started social media i would just not really i hated it like i hated talking to a camera and i found it really hard and i really hated listening to your voice but now whenever i do anything talking <laughs> i love editing it which is a good job right because i should probably like it because it's what i gotta do but i don't know i don't know i love the sound of it thought <laughs> i've thought of something to talk about so i did this last year it might have been one or two years ago with one of my best friends when i visited her in london and basically the task was to describe your perfect day um so me her and her partner we all sat down and it's funny how different everybody's perfect day is so i'll tell you what my perfect day is it would be waking up early to see the sunrise so that would just be my perfect day would start off early see the sunrise on a sunrise walk i think that that would be perfect for me getting up and just seeing the beauty of nature first thing in the morning after that we would have to go to a cafe and it would have to be not hot but not cold but you know just right and have a coffee and a croissant at a cafe um so early morning sunrise hike coffee and a croissant and then possibly some kind of exercise so i know that we've just been on a hike but it wasn't maybe it was a walk right it we weren't it wasn't that hard you know it was just it wasn't a huge long hike half an hour right but some kind of exercise maybe like a long relaxed gym session or maybe some dodgeball with friends a sport or maybe volleyball or maybe tennis or just do you know just a sport with friends um or exercise with friends not by myself it would be with people where you can just laugh you know you can have a laugh and you can just like run around and have fun because i think the endorphins of exercise are so wonderful so my perfect day would definitely involve some kind of activity like that then the afternoon would involve some kind of taste and menu but not too big not too little it would have to be just right because i love food so i'd like to have a little bit of a nibble maybe it wouldn't have to be a tasted menu maybe it could be some tapas but you know food involved and then i think later on so obviously there'd have to be some wine it would have to be wine and food don't be stupid okay we're having we're having a sommelier chosen wine platter right we're having wine we're getting wine okay <sighs> And then we're also going to be um, eating lots of nice food. But little portions, right? Little, and being like, ooh, the flavours are melting in my mouth. And then the evening. I feel like the evening will be some kind of family gathering. Maybe like a barbecue. Or just something with friends and family that's very low-key. Not like crazy vibes, you know? Just peaceful sunset. Um, there's party games going on. Again, we're eating nice food that's my perfect day what is your perfect day tell me what your perfect day involves because i think it's interesting because everybody every single person's is very different um yeah i think i've just pressed the button to make the background blurry and i don't know how i did it and i don't know am i good quality i think so so i think we've just changed don't know what i'm doing here sorry about that i'll fuck anyways right let's just finish this off because i'm almost done i'm just doing me eyelashes now and i just need it i guess put on lipstick and do me hair one topic i'd like to talk about is how i actually just do not care what people think of me um the only people's opinions that i care about are like the people close to us the people that are close to us sorry um and this is just advice that i want to impart onto you um because why the hell would you care about anyone's opinion that doesn't matter um and if somebody like if you are doing things with good intentions and you're doing things that make you happy and you know doing things that make you grow as the person that you are meant to be and somebody close to you is judging you for that 
remove, remove, delete. Don't need that person in your life, right? When I first started my Instagram, way back when, and I know loads of people are doing these now, but it's still something that people are afraid to, you know, follow something that they want to do. Move country or start an Instagram or start YouTube or do something, change job, gain weight, lose weight, honestly, because this is actually something that comes up a lot with clients who are like, I'm quite afraid to like change my habits because of fear of my friends judging me for doing these things differently uh, it's your life right and you know what it's social it's social life is over in the blink of an eye so why the hell would you spend your time caring what people think of you because even if you are literally the most unproblematic perfect person somebody is still gonna have shit to say about you you know like people not everybody is gonna like you and that's actually so fine like why would you want everyone to like you why would you need everyone to like you you only need the people who love you to accept you as a person you know um you can't please everyone and if you do try to please everyone you'll probably not be pleasing yourself you know you need to put yourself first and I think that's a very common issue that a lot of people have is that they worry so much about what other people, like how other people's feelings are, you know? I know you right now might be watching this and be like, guilty, do something about it, right? Because you are not the best version of you if you are constantly pouring all of your energy out of your cup to fill somebody else's up. Stop that right now and fill your own cup up, right? Put it outside in the rain and let the rain fill your beautiful gorgeous cup up and then become the best, best version of yourself. Also, look at how long these eyelashes are. I haven't put mascara on. You know when you haven't put mascara on in so long and your eyelashes come out kind of good? Wow, it's not going to happen on the other side. But yeah, and I think that this works really well for friendships and it works really well for like, I guess, jobs and social media and all these kind of things. Like every time Jake is rang his back again, this is how long um, I've been talking for. So yes, I think in life, whenever I've rejected like negative energy, it's brought me closer to the version of myself that I love and the version of myself that makes me happy so for example when I left my job at Asda it was surrounded by so much negativity like the people there were so negative and that really drained my cup like f metaphorically and, and literally because I would cry myself to sleep on the nights that I had work at Asda, you know, <laughs> like that has physically drained my cup, you know, if I wasn't getting good quality sleep. So that was one thing. Then leaving a relationship um, where it was also doing the same thing brought me closer to like the version of myself that's the best. And then friendship wise to be honest i've not really had any negative kind of draining friendships since school and since then that's not really been an issue um but again in friendships if somebody who is a friend isn't supporting you um then they're not a friend i don't know what i've done to the camera circling back around to earlier on in the video when i was talking about jake and um how somebody said like you don't post them online anymore like is everything okay like it's interesting because i said to jake in the car the other day like he can't anticipate everything about me he knows exactly what i'm thinking and how i'm feeling he knows when i finished the last bite of my food like he knows that the way that I eat, the way that I'm eating, the, the, the way that my body uh, image, not the way that my body, um, what's it called? Body, do you know when you talk with your body? Body language. <laughs> um, he knows my body language for everything. He can sense it and he understands me so deeply and he 
is so thoughtful and truly like helps me fill my cup up. I don't need them to fill me cup. You don't need anyone to fill your cup up, but you know. And in and I guess a relationship is really one of the most important things about your life because it's the person you spend the most time with. It's the person you live with for most people. Um, so I think at times, especially if you're living together, there's going to be times where you need to fill their cup up and they need to fill yours, but it needs to be reciprocal, you know? Um, it can't be totally one-sided. Energy that you choose to put around you is really important because it like makes or breaks who you are as a person and you are to an extent in charge of a lot of that. You are, you are in charge ultimately of what you surround yourself by. I figured out how to turn the background focus off. I've got under boob sweat because I've turned the aircon off because it makes a horrible noise in the background of videos and I've been taking so long to get ready. Um, I will, I've only got red lipstick. I'll put it on because I like red lipstick, but I just feel like it's a, that is, I haven't worn this in a while. It looks questionable. Do I like the color? No, let's try something else. I don't even have any lip liner. But um, how am I gonna finish this video off? I don't know. I made this video to just chat and get to know you on my new YouTube account where catch me talking about some interesting topics and also just talking because we'll discuss this, right? I like the sound of my own voice. This lipstick is so broken. <laughs> like, um, let us do the let us do the thing you have to do. But the top of it is thingy and it's like really wobbly yeah because i'm really swollen that that has not applied very well and this is the best job that i could do but i really do like a red lip but it's a little bit uneven and i'm just a little bit too painful to clean it up perfectly i had a haircut recently and it's just not what i asked for and my fringe is atrocious but i just had a little bit of if I've got one really bad downfall, it's that like in salons or anything beauty related, I will literally, like if it's a food situation, I'm complaining, I'm, I want good food, but if it's like my hair or my nails or yeah, like a beauty treatment, I will just smile and nod over like, mm, this is exactly what I wanted. But there we are. Um, Thank you so much for getting ready with me whilst I talk and talk and talk. If you've made it this far, it's a little bit unfair that you've learned all of these things about me and I know nothing about you. So please leave a comment with any kind of fact about yourself because I would love to know, I would love to learn and I would love to hear something interesting about you. So please go ahead and do that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my new channel and leave a like, comment, all of those things. You know, it helps the engagement, it helps the account, all of those lovely things. And it's very appreciated as well on my side. Stick around and I'll see you in the next videos for more content about me, more educational content, things to do with health, fitness, diet, routine, everything beautiful, wellness and health related. I hope that you have a beautiful rest of morning, evening, day, whatever, weekend, week, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye for now.